Greetings, fellow Blender users. So, puzzle mats. Uh, what are they? This kind of thing here, uh, also known as sometimes crypto mats or render ID passes or clown passes. They've got all kinds of different names, but you, but they're extremely useful and in fact necessary when taking your render from Blender to Photoshop. So we can like so, and this is an example that I've seen that I did where I can easily magic wand select the foreground, the midground, the background, the foreground, everything. Uh, this was done in Cinema 4D. Uh, so sorry to mislead, I hope you didn't think that this was a nice clean uh, puzzle map that was done in Blender. Such a thing is not yet possible that I know of, but we're going to do the best we can because um, these puzzle mats are very hard to do in Blender, if not uh, impossible in the way that we would expect them and hope them to be. So um, let's get quickly into it. So this is a scene that I did recently for 3D Total in a tutorial that's coming out soon. And um, this isn't the best example of a scene because it has foliage with, you know, like alpha channels. And anytime you're going to try and get a, like a, a selection from things like grass and leaves, it's always going to uh, show you the actual shape of the geometry, not the actual shape of the leaf. But that aside, let's just pretend that we're not going to do a very foliage dense scene. This is just to illustrate an example. Um, what we can do to uh, so, uh, sort of like, it's like a, a makeshift measure is we can create uh, any old geometry, in this case cube, and we can create a shader on it that is going to override the shader, uh, well, override the, the render material. And I'm just going to zoom in on this and then just quickly go through it because it's pretty simple. You have this object info node here, and you take the random out. And then we, I've created two different types of color because you, this isn't, th because this is going to be randomized. Let me just say that right now. This is not going to be like a way to select that and select all of that car and select all of that car and give it one color. It's going to create a random color across all objects and we just have to the problem that I've had in the past um, is that you'll get colors that are too similar like this color would be similar to that color so I'm trying to create as much random variety as possible to in the instances where things are overlapping into the same color <clears throat> so we have the random that goes into either and this is a bit strange I don't know but a white noise texture um, we have an emission here set to one and we have the material output and so what will happen is we'll give this a name and so in this case it's just randoms and then we go into view layer properties and into override and then we find our texture type in random there it is and now when we hit render Okay, sorry about that, just had a crash, and so we're back, and this is what it looks like when you hit render with your random texture applied to as an override to the scene, and uh, in the cases where we want some variety, where things may be on reading, we can uh, use this combine HSV node, and so we just take the random into the hue, and then the color to the color and we get something a bit garish but different uh, now so here's what I found and I, I don't know anybody that knows this uh, I just found it by mistake but it's a bit of a I don't know what's a game changer because <laughs> this is still a hack but like so okay so the car here on the left this is important the car here on the left is the same color as the background and then the weird thing is if we sw uh, sw switch from this combined HSV to the white noise. Oh, I keep doing that. Okay, oh, there we go. It's still more or less the same, and and uh, Photoshop's going to struggle um, separating those out. So get this. I bet nobody knows this except me. And now you do. Let me just select that car, and that car is over here. I'm going to go in, I'm going to rename it to anything, 
stick a bee on the end and watch what happens. Look at that! Completely different colour and it will change when you change the... I've got an extra bee, change again to something else and that for me is a game changer because I mean okay this is the other thing is um, if you didn't want to use the render override you also have the option of using uh, the random color thingamajig in the viewport when you go to flat and then random uh, it, and that's a little bit because uh, it's very wishy-washy and it seems like there's a very limited palette but still uh, it still works there so if we go back to the original name of that car actually it is different so so for a while that was the same as the background but you know it just illustrates the point that if I change the change it to anything it just changes color so now you have control that was one something that I always wanted whenever I was looking through my scene I would be like well this is random but I need to change things you could you know I can't let blender decide for me and um, you know so like that pink there is too close to that pink so I'm just gonna select that lamppost change that to, to a B and there we go completely different amazing um, so the downside is um, if I wanted to select the whole car and I often have need to do things like that I need to usually like uh, that is a typical like setup for me where I need big groups of things unfortunately you're just gonna have to do a very primitive thing and like hide everything except those buildings let's say for me I want uh, the mid-ground buildings uh, I just have to basically put it on something like flat and single and then hide the, you know, so there, you know, I'd be able to cut out everything except that, and then um, hide the trees, and then let's say hide the. Well, I need everything but the mid-ground buildings. So yeah, something like that. Even that doesn't quite work, and so I'd have to like physically go in, and you can what you can do is hide, just click H, it'll hide things like that, and now you can render from the viewport view, and uh, it's quite quick. Gives you a fairly clean result. It's a little bit aliased, uh, which is the only downside. So. I do think sometimes you have to go. Now the downside is if you if you choose to go through the the workbench route, where you choose a uh, single flat that, that kind of thing. Let's go to the render view. Um, then the H for hide doesn't work because it's still going to render it because of this little render icon here. So you have to put put them in groups and turn them off it's the quickest way so if I now hit F12 let's just see if there's a difference in the aliasing I don't know I think it's similarly aliased it's not that's the other thing is it's not the cleanest of um, uh, the silhouettes when they render out they're not the cleanest uh, you may want to render at an even higher resolution or something. And that's the only downside, and that's unfortunately where we are at with Blender today. Having to use these workarounds for something that is really fundamental, and it's something that has plagued me ever since I've started using Blender. Um, but it's, you know, for now, this is just going to have to be what we do until there is a proper viable workaround. Anyways, I hope that that helps because it, uh, it really is useful to know these things. It's an essential when you're rendering. You have to be able to like take this and get a really good clean read and to be able to separate things. My suggestion would be um, that you could either assign each object an ID and then when you just render you click something in here that just says, uh, I don't know, 
somewhere in here that just says show render IDs and it comes up as another pass and also what would be great is if there was a way to uh, somewhere in here just add a number to a collection and then that whole collection would have one ID and then just sort out the alias thing because I don't know if that's anything to do with like is it my settings in here or maybe the viewport samples let's uh because this is to do with anti-aliasing, I don't know. But uh, um, I know people are going to say in the comments, "What about crypto mats?" And that's just not for me. That's just not good enough because with crypto mats, you have to um, color pick every single object that you want a certain color, and that can be. I mean, look at this. This is um, this is full of like objects that you'd have to sit and pick all day. Um, or you'd have to parent everything and then you parent everything and that one parented object becomes one object but then you'd have to then unparent it again if you want to actually move things around in the scene and it just becomes it's way too complicated so I gave up on that but uh, comment below if you know of any other solutions um, and then we'll see what we can learn anyway hope that helped and uh, speak to you again soon bye